Well done, Cheese. You managed to beat Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You gotta let somebody know about it. Why not Joseph? Nah, he's probably too busy. No! You know what? Screw it! Let's tell Joseph! Don't even think about it. Before I end up talking about the main topic of this video, I would like to give out some backstory first. When the next generation console was first announced back in 2020, I'll be honest, I wasn't that excited or keen to obtain one just yet. And the reason being is because I was happy where I was at. I loved my PlayStation 4 console, and I had some pretty fun memories with it, like experiencing some of the best exclusive games on the market, and sparking a passion for trophy hunting to collect a platinum. I'll talk more about in depth about my platinums in the not too distant future. One day, I was minding my own business, or to be more accurate, performing a one minute plank that ends up being the most torturous invention of human mankind. God, it fucking hurts! I saw the trailer for Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I was hyped AF, and I needed that game to be on my collection ASAP. Because Ratchet and Clank is a series that I grew up with. It's like Crash Bandicoot or Child Support, I simply can't ignore it. But I did end up realising the video game would only be released on the PlayStation 5 system. On that day, I knew I had to get my hands on a PlayStation 5 console. But of course, finding the PlayStation 5 system is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. But if you keep your eyes open and just with enough luck, Dreams can come true, as cringy as it sounds. And around November of 2021, my dreams indeed came to life. I only got three games at the time. One is Battlefield 2042, which is a game I end up regretting purchasing. Of course it ended up being buggy, and a lot of passion and love I felt was missing in this game. No wonder video gamers would rather play Farming Simulator than Battlefield. I only put in a few hours, and I'm not too sure if I'll end up continuing. The second game being Far Cry 6, which I absolutely loved. The gameplay is cool, the story is dark, and Janalo, and I hope I pronounced that one correctly, gives one hell of a performance as the main villain of the game. Definitely a highlight from my point of view. And I love how the main character sings music from a radio station while driving. And the third game I got is the game we're talking about today. This right here. This game is the only reason why I even bought a PlayStation 5 console. And after all the hype and all the times I had to avoid the spoilers, was it all worth it? <sighs> well, it better be because I just spent $850 on this fucking thing. Keep in mind, however, I'm not going to go easy on this one. Just like with any other video game, this will get a fair, honest, and a critical look. And if I spot some problems about the game, I'm going to call out on it. It's just the way how it works around here. Not every video game gets a perfect score. I will say, I am pretty surprised that this game is following the Ratchet and Clank Future series. After the events of Into the Nexus, I honestly thought they would have continued the story of Ratchet and Clank in 2016. But the more I think about it, it's better to ignore it. The story begins in a different dimension. We see another Lombax named Rivet helping a local civilian from danger and trying to escape from the enemies. So far, that's all we know, but everything will connect as the plot thickens. Meanwhile, in a different dimension, Ratchet and Clank are getting a celebration after their heroic acts from saving the galaxy one too many times. Clank has a special surprise for Ratchet, and it turns out to be the Dimensionator. Clank managed to fix it during his spare time, and just when Ratchet was about to give out his thoughts about it, in comes Dr. Nefarious, and he takes the Dimensionator away and uses it to create multiple portals 
that are literally affecting the universe. After catching up to Dr. Nefarious, the Dimensionator blows up, sending both Ratchet, Clank, and Dr. Nefarious to a dimension where Nefarious actually won the war and is now in charge of the entire galaxy. Both Ratchet and Clank have split up due to that explosion. Rivet overhears Clank that it's his fault and takes Clank away for questioning. And as for Ratchet, he'll later stumble upon a different robot codenamed Kit and they both decide to travel together for a while. So you have two plot lines within the story. One is to reunite Ratchet and Clank once again, not the first time we did that, and two, stop Nefarious, get the Dimensionator back, and turn everything back to the way it was. Story-wise, I thought it was really good. The face animation is 10 times better comparing to Ratchet and Clank 2016, and the voice acting is great as always. And with that being said, you may know Jim Ward for his role as Captain Quark throughout the entire series. Well, as some people may or may not know, Jim Ward was not voicing Captain Quark in this game, and the reason being is because he nearly got succumbed to COVID a few times, and at one point was hospitalized for a few months. So I hope that Jim Ward is well and hopes that he gets better soon. The graphics is great in Rift Apart. It's going to be an occurring theme around here, but it is true what I'm about to say. This is the best looking game in the Ratchet and Clank series. However, I do have a couple of nitpicks I'll be going over throughout the game, so be prepared for that. First things first, let's talk about Rivet and Kit for a moment. Rivet is the new playable character you'll be playing as, and I really do like the new characters. Rivet is brave, smart, and never afraid to get involved in conflict while Kit is a compassionate robot with a horrible past who just wants to be better than her former self. I was concerned that Rivet and Kit would be taking most of the screen time throughout the game, but Insomniac Studios roughly gave the best of both worlds, with not only letting us get to know our new characters, but also giving Ratchet and Clank opportunities to shine. And I do like how Riven and Kit's backstory comes together very naturally, and it brings tension and discovering how they can work together to stop a common foe. Like I said on my updated post, I am trying to stop talking about the third act plot of video games, and going even further could potentially spoil the game for you. If you want to know more about it, just experience the game for yourself. All in all, I enjoyed Rivet and Kit, and I'm totally down for a spin-off game about these two so we can perhaps see even more character development and see some new wacky characters. But I do think Rift Apart is too short for my liking, especially if you have a story about a different dimension and you witness your favourite characters and their alternate versions of themselves. I do like the humble beginnings of how Rivet and Kit come together as a duo, but I wish I could see more of it, you know? See more of their struggles and talk more about their backstory together. Take a look at Ratchet and Clank 2002 for example. That game had all the time in the world to develop these two and tried to convince the player why Ratchet and Clank works together so well in terms of character development. And that game only lasted for around 10 to 12 hours, while Rift Apart lasted half the amount. This is just a personal opinion of mine, but this game could have made so much more of an impact if they just made the game a few hours longer. And speaking of that, I like how we see alternate versions of Skid and Captain Cork, but man, they really missed out an opportunity to create even more different alternate characters from earlier past games in the series. Think about it. Big Al, Helga, Scrunch the Monkey, Kronk and Zephyr, Talwin, and Sasha, only to name a few, would have been so cool to have seen an alternate version of them. I feel like instead of going all out, they went for a more simple approach, and overall, it's good, but thinking about it in my mind, it could have been spectacular. Maybe it's just me because I watched Spider-Man No Way Home, but I digress. I don't want to waste your time complaining about it. Let's jump over to the gameplay, and it's roughly what you'll expect in a Ratchet and Clank game. Traveling from planet to planet, defeating waves of enemies, collecting some items along the way, and continuing the story plot, rinse and repeat. 
It's the same style I've come to know about them from its rise, so I'm happy that nothing too much has changed in Rift Apart and even past Ratchet and Clank games over the years. Except for that game, we don't talk about that one here. The power of Christ compels you! As per usual, we'll start off with the weapons lineup. Of course you have your basics that you would expect, like the Burst Pistol, which is your blaster, the Enforcer, which is your shotgun, the Shatter Bomb, which is your explosive, and the Buzz Blade, which is your disc blade. And it's always so interesting to know that for a long-running series, they still know how to come up with new ideas. Like the Ricochet, which they bounce onto enemies multiple times, the Cold Snap, where you can freeze enemies into blocks of ice cubes, and the Lightning Rod, where you can shoot it and cause the enemy and the one surrounding them to get electrified, just to name a few. The weapons lineup overall is really solid. Not the best lineup of weapons, but they work well and I enjoy each of them for their own personal use. And as the saying goes around here, once you've maxed out the level of a weapon you use, you'll never want to use it again because you have other weapons you need to level up as well. You can purchase your weapons from Ms. Zircon and upgrade them as well by spending Raritanium. There was a weird thing that happened though, and that was on Planet Torin the 4th, where I couldn't access my vendor. At first I thought it was because of an invasion happening on the planet itself, but then after dealing with it, I still couldn't get into it. Just come on, let me buy something already! The one thing I really do like in Rift Apart is the triggers on your controller. This game, and some other PS5 games when I'll eventually get to them, was built to have resistance on your controller whenever you fire your weapon. You can half press it to see where you're aiming at and shoot small bits of ammo depending on the weapon, and full press it to start firing and releasing carnage onto your enemies. It adds another new layer to the formula of a Ratchet and Clank game, and I really enjoy it. It made me feel like I was playing a next-gen video game because of that feature alone. And speaking of that, the loading times are crazy good. Like, seriously, I was blown away just by how quickly it loads up, yet the game still pulls an outstanding 60 frames per second. This is pretty much PC levels we're talking about here. No need to wait for countless minutes as it can easily load up and you can get straight into the action. And of course, what's a Ratchet and Clank game without some Clank puzzles? It's actually not bad this time around. Clank teleports to an area where you have to guide all the other versions of yourself from one side to another. Sounds easy, but you have platforms and objects to move around, otherwise your copy clones will not make it. So you insert these balls... I think that was very stupid of me that I did that, so now I have a, a huge mess of more teasers, so I have to, have to clean this up. To insert into its slot, and then you'll be able to progress. Many of these will have different effects, like running faster, jumping higher, and pulling an object down to name a few. It's very rare for me to say this, but I like the puzzles here. Probably not my favourite in the series, as a crack in time is always the GOAT, but I like it here, and I wouldn't mind experiencing any of these gameplay mechanics in the future. Except for this other puzzle. This one I felt was a bit boring and repetitive. You also play as Glitch through these small mini puzzles to access doors and amongst other things. You crawl around, defeat the viruses with your electro guns, and blow up the virus nest while doing so. It only comes around every now and then, but it still downgrades the gameplay style to me. Much like Marvel Spider-Man, you can skip the puzzles, which begs the question once again to why even add these puzzles in the first place when you can just skip it entirely. But whatever, I don't skip it with the clank bits, but I do skip it with glitch. And you also have your collectibles in here, the main ones being the gold bolts, which if you collect enough, you'll be able to put in special effects like a color palette for example. You can also collect spy bots, and collecting all of them, you'll obtain a rhino, 
Kraga Bears, which look so bloody adorable, and armor pieces to customize Ratchet and Rivet. Now, this is shaping up to be one of the best games I ever played. It does have everything you need out of a Ratchet and Clank game, but this game does have some problems that I cannot simply ignore. Rift Apart has an arena battle, which is an occurring main staple of the series. If you ever need to grab some extra cash or level up your weapons and HP faster, then the arena battles are the way to go. I will say in comparison to the arena battles in previous titles, this one seems simple, a bit basic, but nothing too extraordinary or interesting. And besides, you just cannot beat going Commando's arena battle, that one was pretty cool. Like I said earlier, I like Rivet's character here, but one of the more exciting things I was looking forward to in Rift Apart was... What's her gameplay gonna be like? What can she do that sets her apart from Ratchet himself? Well, after playing through the game from start to finish, I can confidently confirm that she is exactly like Ratchet. Gameplay-wise, she doesn't do anything unique, she doesn't do anything special, and she doesn't do anything different to Ratchet. Anything that Ratchet can do, Rivet can do it too, and the same the other way around. Ratchet learning how to Phantom Dash, Rivet can do it too. Ratchet learning how to hover with his boots, Rivet can do it too. And Rivet learning how to use the Hurl Shot, Ratchet can do it too. You see where I'm coming from? I was hoping for at least something different from the two that can get me looking forward to what the game can present. And hell, I'll go as far to say that there's no unique weapons for Rivet herself other than her hammer. Every weapon and its progress, the level ups and the additional upgrades are transferred over to a different character. And from a realistic point of view in the year 2022, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Attention to detail is always important in video games, and without it, people will start asking questions. <sighs> I can't believe I'm... I'm gonna say this, but... Let's compare this game to The Last of Us Part 2. No, 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 wait, hold on a second. Don't you dare leave this video. You stay right there. You, you stay right there. Say whatever you want about it. You're entitled to your own opinion, but you can't ignore the fact that Naughty Dog always has attention to detail in their games. In The Last of Us Part 2, you can play as a fan favorite character of the series, Ellie, and a new character named Abby. Hey, you could easily compare that scenario to Rift Apart if you wanted to. But the difference is, Abby has her own gameplay style. She has her own weapons to use, and her gameplay features are different and sets her apart from Ellie. I wasn't expecting a masterpiece from Rift Apart, but I just wish they could have given Rivet something different in terms of gameplay, rather than just being a copy and paste. I did notice that they reused some bits and pieces from Ratchet and Clank 2016 and applied it here. Don't think I noticed it, Insomniac. My memory for the most part is usually spot on. Improvising. Improvising. Or at one point during the game, Ratchet just repeats the same word with the same tone again and again. What? 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 And as the bosses go, while a handful of them are pretty cool and somewhat challenging, but the majority of them are just repeats of the same bosses. I got so sick and tired of facing the same Grunthor and the same Nefarious Henchmen all over again. And no, having them in a different skin doesn't count as a brand new boss to encounter. I feel like in terms of the bosses, it's like they ran out of ideas and just hit a quick copy and paste and just remodeled it to make it look different. I hate making comparisons all the time, but compare this game to Going Commando. Each boss is completely new, fresh, but more importantly, different. And that goes for the side bosses too. 
and even though you fight the thugs for less leader multiple times, at least they gave us a new method to beat him instead of doing the same thing. But after all that, I did end up completing the game and even got the Platinum Trophy as well, which is probably the most easiest trophy to get outside of every Telltale game ever. And that was Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. It accomplished a few things in my opinion. One, getting me even more hyped on what's next for the duo and getting myself excited for the eventual Rivet & Kit spin-off game. I did enjoy my time with it, and this game reminded me of just how the series as a whole means a lot to me. Not just as a gamer, but outside of my life as a gamer too. Having said that though, this is not a perfect game. I'll say it right here. I'll be giving Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart a score of 7 out of 10. There's a bunch of missed opportunities that I felt that definitely should have been added into the game, as well as not making Rivet unique enough gameplay-wise to really set her apart from Ratchet. Rift apart, that is. Oh, yeah. I'm getting off track, I'm sorry. But oh well, we're just going to have to wait until the next game in the series to see how everything unfolds, but we'll never know until that day comes. But anyway, thank you for watching this review, and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the links will be down in the description box below. My name is Cheese and Crackers, telling you to keep calm, and keep playing video games.